twin sister ruined my life and family disowned me, but now they need my help after 12 years. I am an independent businesswoman, I started a clothing line of my own and right now it is doing so good and I am more successful than I ever dreamed I could be. I am 28 and been living alone for 12 years now, my family was quick to kick me out and cut me off at 18, I paid for my college my living by doing itty bitty jobs of all kinds. My has never been that on an easy kind, well not until my brand started working good on sales, from there it has not been easy but it definitely has been rewarding. I make enough money to go on vacations, live in my dream house, drive my dream and still save some on the side. And it is because of this my family is reaching out to me after 12 years, I know it must be it because it cannot be because of their long lost apparently love for me came back all of a sudden. I ignored the first few texts I got from my mother saying she misses me and wish she could turn back time and raise me differently, I did not reply back to her but then I got calls from my father too, even my uncle tried to talk to me and urged me to have dinner with all of them. I hate my family but no I was not born hating them, they did things that made me hate them, they disowned me because of my twin sister. Carla and I are almost identical, they're very little to differentiate us but for the most part we look exactly the same and that is where the similarities end. Her personality is exact opposite of me, and she had always been so competitive of me. Doing all the things I did and stealing of my friends and things. My mother never dressed us in same clothes or colors she always got us different things to know which one is who, but Carla always took what was mine she had been mean and did things then blamed them on me. I hated her. But I was more mature so I told myself that as long as I can ignore it I can handle it, but she just could not stop making my life hell. In the senior year prom I had my boyfriend as my date, Nick and I had been dating throughout the senior year and I was a little in love with him, everyone knew that I was serious with him and because it is something I loved Carla of course wanted to take it from me too. The night of the senior prom was supposed to be our first time we were going all the way that night. I had been a virgin and I was finally sure enough about him to give that away, I had everything planned. We had been waiting for it for weeks and I was just so damn excited, but my jealous sister had to ruin it too, so on the night of the prom she spiked my drink and got me blackout drunk, she got an identical dress as mine from the store saying that we were twins and wanted to dress the same and then she went home with Nick and slept with him. When I woke up the next morning in her bed I was so perplexed, I called Nick which he did not pick up and then I saw him dropping Carla off through the window and kissing her goodbye, he was practically swallowing her face and could not stop touching her. That was the moment I realized that the bitch took my place and went with Nick. I opened the window winder and screamed from it, I threw her lamp out at her, then Nick saw me, and when he registered in the dress I was wearing and my sleepy state he realized it and his face was of horror. God I was so mad I started crying, he slept with her, he did not recognize it was not me, he did not love me. I was so mad I started trashing her room but Nick did not even come in to talk to me, to explain it to beg for forgiveness. That made me more mad and it was not enough that Carla started to make moaning sounds outside her own bedroom door that I had locked, saying how good Nick was in bed and how tenderly he treated her, he even said he loved her and he had the best night with her. She was getting to my head, she was saying all these things on purpose so I finally lost it. I knew she smoked, and I also knew she drank at the house and had some of it stashed somewhere in her room. So I started looking around for the lighter and the liquor she stole from my parents hopefully. And when I found it I did the most reckless thing I had ever done in my 18 years. I splashed alcohol all over her things and then lit it. I stayed in the room till the fire got high enough to do the damage and basically till the smoke got my parents freaking out and banging on the door. I burned my leg that day, I opened the door but the room was in flames, all her things burning and the fire was not easy to put down, they even had to call the fire brigade to put the fire out, it almost started reaching the rest of the house, the vines covering our side wall that my mother so much loved died for good that day, it was a commotion. They called me crazy and I did realize the height of the act but I was just so mad, I would have said sorry but they just dismissed what Carla did with me and held what I did the reason of everything, they never even asked if I was okay because I was sitting in that burning room, I bet to this day they do not have any idea that I have a huge burn scar on my left calf. That was it, my dad came and told me I am out of hands and I have no regards for my family or its safety and they cannot keep providing for someone so ungrateful and they told me to move out. I was so hurt, I lost my boyfriend, my family a home all in one week. I knew I wanted to go to college, I just did not know how, I took a year off of studying and worked my ass off doing all sorts of job to save enough to at least start dreaming about college again, it was hard but it worked out somehow and all the while, never once did my family tried to help me or ask how I was doing, never wished me or invited me to Thanksgiving or Christmas, it was horrible spending those holidays alone for the first few years but then I found amazing friends and it has been better since then, I started missing them less and less, now it is almost like I they do not exist, I have lived alone for so long with no one caring that when I started getting their calls and messages it was almost shocking and weird to me. 
My family says they just miss me because it has been so long and they want to see me. I am not sure why the only reason I can think of is that they learned how well I'm doing financially, I can't think of anything else. I don't know if I should accept their offer of dinner and their apology, because I am still very much hurt and mad about how they left me to fend for myself at that age and then never bothered to check if I was alive or not. Am I the asshole for still holding the grudge? Update 1, Hello my friends, I just wanted to share what happened next for the people who cared, so I decided to go meet my family if not for my love of them then to just see what caused the sudden wave of affection towards me. I actually offered to have the dinner at a 5 star restaurant and asked them to meet me there and that it will be on me. They said they wanted to know how I was doing, me being able to afford all a dinner at that place was a good way of showing how well. I saw my parents after years and it almost brought tears to my eyes, but I just controlled them, not letting them know. My mother hugged me and cried, she said I have no idea how much she missed me and regretted kicking me out, my father also gave me a curt hug and said he was so very proud of me for building this amazing life. He always knew I was the smart daughter. I was not rude but I was not exactly affectionate either, I was still mad and one night of them saying they love me was not going to erase 12 years of feeling unlovable. Midway of the dinner I cut the chase and asked them how did they decide to remember me now after all these years and why Carla is not with them, I never checked on her, I never wanted to but I assumed she will come with them as she was jobless the last I heard and was living with them. My parents looked at each other weirdly and then decided to tell me what exactly happened. So their favorite daughter who was actually the reason that fire happened that day did not just ruin my life. My dad said she just got worse with time, that she did not finish college and just dropped out in second year and then just started spending money. They tried to tell her to get a job but she never stuck to anything and her expenses were too much. They put up with it because they did not want to lose the only child they had left in the house but after her spending bill got too much they decided to cut her off. Four months later they found out in an attempt to make quick money she fell in with the wrong people who got her involved in debts and drugs, currently she is in jail serving time and she messed up so bad that now my parents have no home, her debt is yet not paid and the house is sold. They are living with my uncle at the moment, and he told them about me and they were so proud of me. My mother was crying throughout the evening and they never asked out loud that they needed help or a place to live but I knew they did and in a moment all my anger melted and I just hugged them. I told them they have nothing to worry about and they still have me as their daughter and I will do anything for them which is quite true, yes I hated them for a part of my life but I could not see my parents being homeless and that desperate, my father had pride so he could not say it out loud but they raised me better. I am not going to pay Carla's debt but my parents are with me now and I am eager to make up for all the years we lost over a petty thing. It all turned out well guys. My mother-in-law and I do not get along. She's the classic good Christian martyr, taking every opportunity to point out all the sacrifices she's made throughout her life, much to her own detriment, especially for her children. She also enjoys passive-aggressively insulting me, every chance she gets. One of her favorite things to do is quote Bible verses. The only problem is, she makes them up to suit her needs. Yesterday evening, my sister-in-law, who is single, and I were talking about how hot the new weatherman on our local news station is. I said something like, man, I'd like to see him shirtless at the beach on a hot summer day. My sister-in-law agreed enthusiastically. I should have known better. My mother-in-law's face transformed instantly into an expression of utter disdain. The ambience of the room changed so much that it was almost palpable. She looked at me and said piously, You know, dear, thou shalt not avert thine eyes from thine husband. That's Proverbs 36 3, you know. I have known for years that she was full of frankincense, but I wasn't knowledgeable enough about the Bible to call her on it. So, I excused myself to the restroom and looked it up. Sure enough, not only was she completely wrong, I found out there are only 33 chapters in Proverbs. I went back to the living room, sat down, and asked her politely, Mother dear, I was thinking about what you just said. I'd like to cross-stitch that verse onto a pillow and keep it in my living room. You know, just to remind me and make doubly sure I never go astray. Could you quote it again, along with the chapter and verse? Just then, she busted out her second round of theatrics feigning a heart attack. Along with the Bible verses, this is one of her staples. As usual, everyone rushed to her side. By the time she recovered, everyone had forgotten about it, just as she planned. I decided to drop it. When we got home, my husband crucified me. He said he knew what I was doing, and that I had intentionally upset her. He insisted that I was the cause of her heart incident and that it could have killed her. He said that since she was getting older, I should just suck it up and put up with her behavior. Am I the a-hole for calling her out as a false prophet? If she had died, would she have come back to haunt me, three days later? Backstory, I am 10 years older than my younger sister and have a house about 2 hours from my parents' house where she lives. 
My sister often stays with me on the weekends because I live a few minutes from a large recreational lake. This is fine, as long as she is quiet and allows me to sleep as I work 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. shifts all weekend. My sister is very courteous, and I enjoy having her over. However, my sister has been bringing her new friend with her. They drive separately because the friend leaves for summer school on Sunday nights, and my sister is on summer break and often stays until Monday afternoon so we can spend more time together because I work weekends. This friend has been nothing but trouble. She is very loud, obnoxious, and annoying. She often wakes me several times during the night laughing loudly, going in and out of the house and slamming the door, using the microwave slash oven timer, etc. I have nicely told her to please keep the noise down, and she always says that she is trying to be quiet but forgets sometimes that I'm there. The major issue is that the friend continues to park directly behind me in my driveway where I cannot back out to go to work in the mornings. I go to bed around 8 p.m. on Fridays, and the friend usually arrives at my house later than that, so I can't catch it as it happens. I always have to find her keys in the morning to move the car myself or if I can't find them, wake her to move her car. This has almost made me late for work every Saturday for the past 5 weeks. I remind her the next day when I get home to please not park behind me because there is plenty of street parking, but it never fails for her to be behind me the next Saturday when I leave for work. This week was the last straw. I set up a traffic cone behind my car last night to remind her to not park behind me. When I woke up this morning, I saw that she had moved the cone and parked behind me even though the space behind my sister was empty and there was plenty of street parking in front of my house. I was extremely angry, as this was at least the fifth week I'd told her to not park behind me. I called a tow truck and had her car towed. While I was at work, I got an angry text from the friend asking about her car. I explained to her that I'd had it towed and that she was not to block me in intentionally again, or she was no longer welcome in my house. My sister and her friend both think I'm the a-hole, but I feel that after so many reminders, my actions were justified. Am I the a-hole? Update, my sister has apologized to me, she was unaware of the times I had to move her friend's car and only knew about the 2x I had to wake her friend to find her keys and move the car. The friend did not tell her I was moving her car in the mornings. I tried not to start drama between the two of them by calling the friend out in front of my sister, so she truly did not know how I felt. She and I have agreed that the friend is not to come back over, and I doubt she and the friend will remain friends for much longer. Thanks for the clarification that I was not the a-hole.